Welcome back, chess friends. It's 1834 once more, and McDonald is winning four games to one in this second match. Um, he's won the last three games in a row. It's just unprecedented, and his fame is spreading throughout the land, so he's coming for game number six with his shades on. If he wins this game, he's won the entire second match, so good luck to him. Can the Bordenay do something to stop him? Well, let's find out. But first, it's time once more to ask what is going on here, because I have no idea. Le Bordenay starts with d4, d5, and c4, and remember this game is taking place in an era where it would be rude to not accept a gambit, so McDonald captures, and Le Bordenay plays e3, and now McDonald goes for e5. We have bishop captures the pawn, the black pawn captures the white pawn, and the white pawn captures the black pawn, and now McDonald plays knight to f6. And we continue with knight to c3 from Le Bordenay and bishop to e7. So McDonald's cleared a, uh, cleared a path for castling here, uh, nice and early. Um, Morphy, commenting in 1859, says, uh, see his previous comments for his remarks on this opening. So thank you, Morphy. We have knight to f3 and castles by McDonald, as we expected, and bishop to e3. And c6 from McDonald and h3 here and now knight on b to d7 so mcdonald is doing a good job developing rapidly but so is Labordne. we have bishop back to b3 knight to b6 and it's Labordne's turn to castle now which he does and mcdonald just plays his kingside knight towards the center the d5 square and Labordne goes for queen to e2 getting on this open file now here uh, <laughs> McDonnell does like to play his f-pawn forward to try to make an attack, but he's worried about this light square bishop uh, causing trouble with his king, so he just preempts that by first moving his king to h8. Le Bordenay brings his a-rook over to double up behind the queen, uh, making it even stronger down the open file. Maybe he can do something with this. And we have a bishop to d6. And Le Bordenay decides that his bishop's... Uh, useless here now that the king moves so he brings it back to c2 to harass the pawn in front of the king and we continue with f5 from mcdonald like we said and now we have knight to e5 getting on a central out outpost very nice and here i'd like to see if you can spot the next good move for mcdonald and i'll give you a couple of seconds you can even pause the video if you like well, I'm sure that you managed to spot the best move from McDonald would have been to take off your shades so that you can see the board properly, you idiot. Because here he played f4, attacking the bishop, but this enables Le Bordenay to play queen to h5, threatening checkmate. This pawn move revealed the double attack with the bishop on this pawn. So now McDonald is on the back foot and losing where he was previously drawing. So uh, what does he do here? First he plays his knight back to f6, which adds a defender to this pawn and also attacks the queen. But Le Bordenay has knight to g6, which delivers a check. The pawn can't capture the knight because it's pinned by the queen, so the king has only got one move, and that's g8. But you'll notice that this puts it back on this nice light, light square diagonal we were talking about earlier, and Le Bordenay's bishop is still on the roam. It goes to b3 to deliver another check. McDonald blocks with his other knight, Le Bordenay's knight captures, and here you'll notice it's not check for McDonald at the minute, and the queen is still under attack here. However, Morphy says, he should evidently have been mated on the next move had he captured his adversary's queen. Well, okay, let's see this. So if the knight captures the queen, then simply this knight coming to e7 delivers a double check from itself and the revealed bishop. Uh, the king can't move to h8 because it's defended by this knight. Obviously, he can't come here and he can't put anything in between because it's a double double check. He can't capture the knight because it's still in check, so it's just checkmate and the game's over. However, McDonald spotted this and he did not capture the queen here. He captured the knight with the pawn and the game continues. We have a bishop captures d5, delivering a check again. And we have knight captures, and now queen captures, and it's another check. Uh, this time, McDonald blocks with his rook. Knight back to e5, and now McDonald develops his light square bishop finally. Uh, it's attacking the queen, but it's got no defenders, so the queen immediately captures it. But 
let's watch how this pans out. We have the black bishop captures the knight, the white pawn captures the bishop, the black pawn captures the white bishop, and the rook captures the black pawn. And we'll let Morphy comment here. He says, This series of moves has been capitally played by Le Bourdonnais, and the result is a clear gain of two pawns. All interest in the game is now at an end, victory being a mere question of time. So very sad for McDonnell, but let's see how he plays. Um, Morphy's quite correct. There's, um, there's six pawns for Le Bourdonnais and four for McDonnell. Queen to e8, leading to a queen exchange on that square. And now f4, pushing the pawns in the center. Rook to c7, rook to f2. Uh, king to f7, heading towards the center because it is the end game. g4, continuing to push the pawns. Uh, rook down to c5 and rook on f to e2, trying to add some extra protection to this center pawn. We have um, a5 now from McDonnell and king to f2 from Le Bourdonnais. b5 from McDonnell, king to f3, and now b4 from McDonnell and a3. Rook across to b8, a captures, the rook captures, and now rook to c3. And here, McDonald finally gave up and said, that's enough, well done, you've managed to win one game out of the last four. Well done, Frenchman. So why did he resign? Well, shortly, a pair of these rooks is going to get traded off, for example, like this. And from there, Le Bourdonnais is two pawns up, as Morphy said, and eventually the weight of these pawns is going to be too much for for McDonald to stop and one of them is going to become a queen and it'll be a short checkmate from there. So McDonald was perfectly right in resigning. However, he's still four games up to two. He only needs one more game to win the second match. Can Le Bourdonnais win three in a row and come back to win 5-4? I hope not, but anything could happen. Join me again for game seven and we'll see what happens next.